Well, with reference checking for a new employee, um, comes back to one idea that I say from stage when I'm speaking, and that is to really mess things up in a company requires a computer. A company requires a human being on a computer. And if you have lots of human beings on computers, they can cause a lot of distress for you and your company. One mishire can cost five, 10, even 15 times the annual salary you pay them because of all the damage they do. Yet I don't know of anyone who does enough reference checking and they should be doing it almost like in the United States we have the FBI and the CIA which is the central intelligence um, organization that uh, is is known to do reference checking on political figures civilians. The same level of importance should be placed on hiring anyone even at the lowest levels of your company because sometimes they can do the most damage. Now I was taught this methodology which I'm about to share with you with uh, by uh, a teacher of mine whose name is Brad Smart. He hired me as uh, his consultant for marketing but he was a teacher of mine in teaching me how to hire and do reference checking because he did that for Jack Welsh who ran General Electric which at the time was the most valuable company on earth. This is before the years of Apple. Now uh, he's done this for many other Fortune 500 companies and companies doing billions of dollars and my company doesn't do billions of dollars but um, I figured if if it's good enough for a billion dollar company it's good enough for me. And so he does recommend and I recommend because I've hired literally probably close to a hundred people over my lifetime personally personal hires that it's important to have more than one interview and it's important in the final stages of an interview when you're about to hire someone doesn't matter what level they're coming in on at the very low end or the very very high level everyone in the company should be meeting them not that they have a say but they should meet them and have the feeling that they're creating something people support what they help to create you see now that's not the strategy I'm about to teach you and you may know it already and if you do then look at the way I'm teaching you and see if you can apply it even more in your business in one of the final interviews that you have in fact my final interview I ask the uh, applicant I ask the candidate who's working I ask them um, a question that many of them don't like and I ask them if it were okay for them to set up three appointments with former employers so I can speak to them. Now these are former employers who they transitioned from, meaning they left, or maybe it may have been an employer who fired them, or maybe they just outgrew their job, or may, maybe they were stolen from another company, it doesn't matter, but they're former employers, three of them. If they don't have three, they're not hired. I don't want anyone who's new. I want someone who's had some level of um, experience as an employee. So if they say yes, I'll give you those three. I say, will you set up appointments with them? Well, now they have to set up appointments with them. Now you're checking if you know they have a relationship with someone that is done. So the two most important days of work are the first and the last day, right? So you're going to see how important their final day of work was just by their enthusiasm of setting up an appointment if they're going to work for you. Now, once they've said yes, they do have three and yes they will set the appointment then you ask them this question if I were to ask that person your former employer what your single greatest strength was what will that person say and that is not a question like asking the person directly what's your greatest strength that's asking what is that other person going to say about you what is that other person going to say that your greatest strength is and you have to tell me as if you know what they're going to say. That means you're in touch with your strength. You're in touch and you have clarity and self-awareness in the workplace. Very powerful question. Then the next question you say and ask and say, if I were to ask them what your single greatest weakness was, what would that person say? Again, you're not asking them what's your greatest weakness. You're saying, what will that other person say is your greatest weakness? You do this with three people and you call them up and the entire call typically will last three, maybe five minutes. 
sometimes 10. Many of them for me have lasted over an hour. How? Because they kept me on the phone, these former employers, because they were fascinated by the way I structured the interview. They thought it was a very unique and clever idea and they wanted to learn how to do it themselves in hiring their own people. And even more interesting is when you do this, you end up having alliances and friendships, even business relationships with the people that you were checking references on your former employee, as a former employer of the employee that you just hired. Now you have someone who they used to have. It's almost as if they're sending you one of their children and now you're taking care of them. So it just makes sense that you get along. I have become strategic alliance partners with many of the people who I checked with and I just asked them what would he say that you are going to say about him about the greatest strength and weakness because you say you asked him you know what he said now you want to see what you're going to say as the former employer do you see what I'm saying and then many times they'll ask you what did your candidate say whatever their name is right and if they're in alignment, that candidate gets hired and you end up having a new friend whom you check references on. If you do this with every single person you hire, you will expand your business just through reference checking. It's a very powerful approach, very powerful approach and I recommend that you begin doing it now. I can teach you how to do it, but many of our mastermind uh, facilitators and partners do this because that's the first thing we teach, how to hire properly.